Hello everyone, I'm Liz Fairchild, Executive Director of Business Forward. Welcome to this year's fourth and final national webinar with the Small Business Digital Alliance, a co-sponsorship between the U.S. Small Business Administration and Business Forward. Today's webinar highlights tools for e-commerce holiday readiness. Today we'll help you get ready for this season's e-commerce opportunities, including how to streamline your operations and protect both your business and your online customers around the world. To kick off today's program, we're joined by Administrator Isabella Casillas Guzman, head of the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Voice for America's 32.5 million small businesses in President Biden's cabinet. You'll then hear from our national members and local allies, who will provide a sample of the resources available to you in the Alliance's Digital Tool Library. We really encourage you to explore the library, which includes now more than 250 unique training resources, from cybersecurity to digital marketing and exporting. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm pleased to now welcome Administrator Guzman to share her opening remarks. Thank you so much, Liz, for that kind introduction and for your partnership. Welcome everyone to SBA's fourth Small Business Digital Alliance national webinar. SBA's private sector partners in the Alliance are here to share critical success factors for you to more effectively run your business with a focus on operations, e-commerce, digital marketing, logistics, and cybersecurity. We created this webinar and the Small Business Digital Alliance with Business Forward to help you level up your business with free tools and resources, giving you the know-how to manage in this increasingly digital economy. As we know, it'll help you do what you do best create the products and services that we depend on every day in communities across America. You know, reflecting back on COVID, our small businesses, our infrastructure and supply chains, our economy where it was just not ready when it first hit. And the SBA has been there to help our small businesses. President Biden and this administration came in with the experience and vision to restore our nation's economy. And the president has been committed to an economic agenda that will rebuild with resilience in mind. And thanks to the president's American Rescue Plan, we vaccinated Americans and reopened our economy and the SBA was able to save and help those small businesses get back on their feet, especially those hard hit businesses, so that we could lead the strongest economic recovery in American history and of any developed nation in the world for that matter. Small businesses are at the core of that recovery as they are the job creators and the ones who really propel our economy forward. Under the Biden-Harris administration, we've created 10 million jobs and seen nearly 8 million new business starts. And the president's historic legislation is far reaching to continue to rebuild our economy with resilience. Finally, repairing and upgrading our infrastructure, including broadband, uh, restoring American manufacturing and innovation, tackling the climate crisis, bringing down the cost of health care and clean energy, and making sure America is strong and competitive, enough to handle everything we know is coming our way. And as we continue to navigate challenges for our small businesses, this plan will help us fight global inflation and build an economy that works for everyone. You know, and to help with your readiness as entrepreneurs, we at the SBA want to make sure you have the resources in your toolbox to get digital safely. That can mean more customers through your doors or buying your products online, more efficiencies in your management with technology, overall just more resilience with these great digital tools. You know, e-commerce is a $768 billion marketplace in the U.S. And it's also a pathway to millions of consumers who live outside the United States. The question is, are you digital ready to go after those opportunities? And you will be with more than 250 free tools and trainings in our digital tools library and the Small Business Digital Alliance. Use all these tools to build your online strategies and get insights on your customers' buying habits and how to reach new customers or find and retain talent, so critical right now, and level up your cybersecurity. You know, more than ever, we want you to grow your revenues and create greater operational efficiencies to survive and thrive. The Small Business Digital Alliance trainings have already helped tens of thousands of entrepreneurs across the nation, and now it's your turn. 
So thank you for joining us. And thanks to all the presenters, our experts and staff, and our great partners out there who have made the Small Business Digital Alliance such a success this year. Now let me hand things off to our speakers and get you all started in getting digital safely. Thank you so much. Hello, I'm Kara Hoganson from Principal Financial Group, and I would like to welcome you to this timely conversation around e-commerce holiday readiness. At Principal, addressing cybersecurity concerns is a critical component of our commitment to small businesses. Our collaboration with the Cyber Readiness Institute helps us extend education tools and actionable recommendations to help you understand and address cybersecurity risks. U.S. retail e-commerce holiday sales are projected to grow nearly 16% to reach over $235 billion this year. With this revenue opportunity, there is also an increased chance for threat actors, fraud, and cyber attacks. So how do you protect your business? How do you raise awareness of vulnerabilities with your employees? And what actionable steps can you take ahead of the holiday busy season? In this session, we will aim to provide you with relevant and timely information on this topic, as well as tips that will help you put together a plan to best protect your business, not only during the holiday season, but all year round. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Kim Fifner, VP and Chief Information Officer of U.S. Insurance Solutions at Principal Financial Group. Today, I have the honor to introduce one of the most reputable voices in cybersecurity for small businesses, Karen Evans. Karen is the Managing Director at the Cyber Readiness Institute. For over 20 years, Karen has been at the forefront of cybersecurity policy with congressional and presidential appointed positions at the U.S. Department of Energy, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and the Office of Management and Budget. Karen, thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. I'm ready. The most recent data from the U.S. Small Business Administration reports that there are almost 33 million small businesses in the U.S. This year, U.S. retail e-commerce holiday sales are projected to grow almost 16% to reach about $236 billion in sales. Karen, what's your reaction to these numbers? Well, I think this is great news for small and mid-sized businesses. I, I mean, I'm really excited. I think it shows growth. Uh, I think on the flip side, what we have to little be concerned about is it's also great news for people who don't necessarily have small businesses growth in mind and would like to take advantage of this growth. It is true that where there's tremendous growth, it attracts bad actors. Yes, and so I, I have concern going forward, but I'm excited for them. Small businesses are investing more in technology. In fact, according to the Principal Financial Wellbeing Index, technology is a major area of investment for businesses, as 56% of companies are investing at least a third of their expendable income on technology. Karen, how much do you think small businesses should allocate to cyber protection measures? It, that I'm glad you asked that. I get asked this a lot. It's, it's really um, a question of risk. And when we develop our materials at CRI, it's for like a two-person pizza shop all the way up to a 5,000 mid-sized business. And so the resources are gonna vary. The one thing that we do try to tell everyone is it is a commitment of time to be able to understand, know what your resources are and go through this. But it really is a, a measurement of risk. And based on the statistics that you just showed, I think when they start looking at resources, does it make sense, oh, do I go out and buy the new shiny new tool or do I hire a new person that helps me actually process sales? And so it really ends up being that top of a choice for small and mid-sized businesses. And they have to balance that risk against what's the likelihood of an incident happening. 
Yes, I, I love that your program though helps businesses know how to get started and puts them on a path to being more secure. And that's the starter kit really does help them think through some of these problem sets. Yes. As SMBs are shifting to e-commerce and investing more in technology, what steps can employers take to help mitigate holiday vulnerabilities? Well, I want to start out with a statistic that says nine out of 10 incidences are usually due to human error. So what a small business uh, could really do and really should do is it starts with the owner of the organization really working with their employees and developing a culture of awareness. We call it being cyber ready, but it, it's really that human element um, that you, you really want to focus on so that we then do campaigns that keep that constant awareness out for them. So we will be doing again uh, the do's and don'ts for holidays for um, from CRI so that small and mid-sized businesses can keep things in the forefront of their mind as, as they're taking advantage of this growth. I couldn't agree more that it is about all of us as employees remaining vigilant and programs that allow us to continually keep things in front of all of us, I think really helps. Uh, yes, I agree, 100%. Karen, what steps can employers take with their employees to help be that first line of defense against cybersecurity threats? So I, I mentioned um, the starter kit earlier, Kim, and you know as well as I do, um, when I tell you the basic things that we're focused on, it really is this human element and leaders need to stress that every employee has a part to play. So when you, you look at the core four, we call it the core four that CRI focuses on to help with that culture, it's more, it's passwords, it's phishing, it's uh, automatic updates and it's removable media. And we focus on those basic things so that you can create the environment that you are cyber ready. And then these other campaigns that we have, like the Fishing Fridays that we keep trying to keep that on everybody's mind, um, creates that culture. But then everyone is aware, oh, I have to like stop and think for a minute. Should I really click on that invoice? It may be from, the, it is from our company, but you know, they normally don't do business this way. It gives you that time to maybe I should think and not just rush through everything. Because as you know, during the holiday season, we're all going to be rushing, but maybe we need to think a little bit when we're processing orders. I completely agree. During the during this season, we all need to just slow down and think through it a little bit more because we are truly the best protection for our businesses. Yes, we are. We're the first line of defense. Thank you, Karen, for all of this helpful information. To close out, can you talk more about the program you referenced and how to sign up? Absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Uh, the Cyber Readiness Program is our flagship program. It's available at our website, cyberreadiness.org. And if you go to the program tabs, you'll find it there. Under resources, you'll find a bunch of other resources that we talked about. And the key thing today is I want to make sure that you use the champion code principle. And all these resources are available to small and mid-sized businesses for free. So anyone who comes to the website, you can use these resources for free and please use the champion code principle. Thank you, Karen. And thank you for joining us today. Thanks for the opportunity. Hello, Small Business Digital Alliance and Business Forward family. My name is Lashana Manigal and I am the Director of Small Business Services, District Business Liaison Program with the Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, an economic catalyst for the city of Detroit. Part of our mission at DEGC involves providing economic opportunity for Detroit residents and employers who decide to call our city home. And that mission includes elevating our small business community through innovative programming and resources that help bring their ideas from conception to reality and continue to thrive once their doors are open. It's also why we take great pride in partnering with other organizations like the Small Business Digital Alliance that are committed to helping small business owners connect to digital tools so that they can remain ahead of the curve and gain a competitive advantage. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, Detroit small business owners like many around the country faced a host of challenges. And one need that was abundantly clear was an increased urgency for them to strengthen their digital presence or establish one if they hadn't already. 
In response, the DEGC partnered with the New Economy Initiative, Detroit Means Business, Connect 313, Michigan Community Resources, and the University of Michigan's Detroit Neighborhood Entrepreneurs Project to help small business owners go from tech novice to tech savvy and do it quickly. We created the DIY Digital Resource Guide for Detroit small business owners to answer that call. The workbook tackles topics such as branding, e-commerce, social media, and data management, accounting, and more to help small business owners who are pillars of our neighborhoods stay thriving and surviving. Since the COVID-19 pandemic began, the DEGC has administered more than $15 million in COVID relief grants, and we still have so much more work to do. I'm happy to share that this workbook will be made available for all webinar attendees considered an early gift for the holidays. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or DEGC.org and have a wonderful holiday season. Hi, I'm Katherine Humphreys. And I'm Carla Nicotaitis. We are the co-creators of All You Need Method. And today we're gonna to walk you through five ways that you can stand out online this holiday season, which we know is a very saturated season for both brands as well as consumers. But before we get started, Carla is going to tell you a little bit more about All You Need Method. All You Need Method is a seven-step method that Catherine and I created after having 20 plus years of combined experience working across brand strategy, marketing, and PR for top leading consumer brands and also many startups and small businesses. Right now, All You Need Method is a resource that teaches small business owners how to build a lasting brand. So everything from your messaging to positioning, to building your website, to getting your social media off the ground, and to achieving your business goals, All You Need Method is an online resource to help you do that. We do that through an online digital course, the All You Need Method Starter Kit, and we also work one-on-one -on -one with small business owners through strategy sessions. And we love giving as much free tips and advice as we can through our social media channels and our blog on allyouneedmethod.com. So the first step to standing out this holiday season is considering your target audience's needs. This is going to allow you to service them beyond your product or beyond your service and to really connect with them and build loyalty and credibility. So in order to do this, it's important to have a clear visual of who your target audience is. Of course, as a small business owner, you've considered who your target audience is, who you're building your business for, but you have an opportunity this holiday season to get really clear on understanding their needs and their pain points this time of year. So our recommendation is to put pen to paper, start a Google Doc, and really identify who it is that you're building your business for. Everything from key demographics to understanding their hobbies, what inspires them, how do they spend their free time, other brands that they like, their shopping habits. Put this all in a Google Doc or on paper and reference it as you continue to go through these steps. And think about what they most need this time of year. So for example, if your target audience is working moms, they might need family-friendly activities to do during the holiday season or easy recipes to make, easy ideas for holiday decorating. Cross-reference this with what industry or category your business is in and your areas of expertise and think about how you can service them or inspire them this season outside of your product or service. Again, this is going to allow you to really, really connect with them and build that loyalty and credibility that ultimately leads to sales. Our second tip on how to stand out this holiday season is to inspire and to educate your audience first before you're selling. Obviously, the holidays are a time where many small businesses and every retailer or, um, or shop out there is running holiday promotions. It's a really, really important part of the year, right? So absolutely, you want to try to sell your top selling product or service. But the way to do that in a way that really stands out is to think about what are your target audience's needs and how can you position your product or service in a way that is educating them, inspiring them, or even just giving them new ideas on how to use your product or service. One way that 
to do that is to think about your product through an editorial eye. So think about um, your favorite magazine, whether that's a tra travel magazine or a food publication or a fashion magazine. Think about where you dream to see your own product or service featured. Now you can actually write that article yourself. That's what we mean by editorializing your product. So as a small business owner, even if you have a retail or brick and mortar location, or if you are a Christmas tree store, or if you are a restaurant, there are ways to editorialize your product. So that just means putting your product into context, bringing those ideas of use to life. Think about talking about your product or service in a way that a magazine would talk about your product or service verse in a way that you would see it in a promotional sale or pamphlet. So absolutely think about ways that you can bring your product or service to life and editorialize it for your target customers. Our third tip is communicate consistently. As a small business owner, you of course have a million things going on and sometimes it's very difficult to get to what to post to Instagram that day or to send out a newsletter. The last couple of months of the year are a great opportunity to reconnect with your audience through your owned channels. So any platforms that you manage, such as your website, a newsletter, a website blog, or Instagram or any other social media channels. So our recommendation is to think about what we just talked about, how you can service your target audience, what their needs are, how you can editorialize your product, and think about the three most important message points that you want to convey to your audience this season. Maybe that's a holiday collection or a big sale coming up. You wanna communicate this over and over again through your own channels, in the next couple of months. And to help you keep on track, we recommend creating a content calendar. So maybe it's only posting one to two times a week or sending one newsletter a month, put it on your calendar so that you can keep track and create content in advance. This is going to help you be top of mind as consumers are sifting through the millions of products out there that are available for gifting. The fourth tip is to show up as the founder of your business. And this is an incredible way to differentiate your business or product or service. So many small business owners are to do this and make the leap. And because of social media and because of the digital online world that we live in, there are so many opportunities to easily show up and talk and be the face of your business or your brand. And the holiday season is a well time to do that. So even if you're apprehensive or you're scared or you just don't feel like it, give it a shot. This is a great time of year where you can talk about, you can get on Instagram, you can get on TikTok, even on LinkedIn, whatever social media platforms you're currently active on or um, where you think you will have the highest chances of reaching your target customer or target audience. You can, you can create a short little video or create short content that shows people the face behind your business or your company. Um, you can tell your founding story. Why did you start your business? Is it a family business? Is it something that you started recently? You can talk about your entrepreneurial journey. You could give tips for surviving the, ho um, the holiday season as a solopreneur or as a established business. Whatever your ex authentic experience has been as a founder, use that to create content and to connect with your audience. You can also use this to personalize your holiday messaging. If your product or service is something that you use in your daily life or use seasonally or have helped um, many other customers implement into their own life, tell those stories, bring those messages to life. There's no better person than you as the founder of your business to do that. It's also an opportunity to reinforce your values. What do you stand for? Sustainable design, if you're a food company, do you stand for a certain quality of ingredients? The holiday season and showing up the founder of your, uh, during the holiday season, showing up as the founder of your business can really give additional credibility and differentiate you. Even if you have the same exact product as someone else, there's only one you and it's a really unique selling point. Um, and last but not least, think about all the opportunities that arise during the holiday season. There's holiday gift guides. Could you put together your picks for holiday gift guides within your, for holiday gifts within your industry? 
Could you put together your personal wish list, things that you want, so you can show your customers behind the scenes of a little bit more of your personal interests and um, and shopping lists? Or even it could be as simple as posting your founding story on Small Business Saturday and making that accessible uh, across all of your own channels, website and social media. Our last tip is to partner with like-minded brands and influencers. So during the holiday season, of course, you want to get in front of as many eyes as possible. And partnering with a like-minded brand or influencer is an excellent way to widen your reach. So think about brands and influencers who you've been in touch with over the past year, who you could connect with and collaborate with in some way. This might be as simple as an Instagram giveaway or a newsletter giveaway, or perhaps you're collaborating on a gift guide together. Remember, an influencer doesn't have to be someone with a million Instagram followers. This could be another small business owner or someone in your community who has influence and who is a great fit for your brand and your product or service. This is also an opportunity to cross promote. So this is an opportunity to collaborate and share it on your own channels that we talked about earlier and that the other brand or influencer can share on their website, blog, or Instagram. This is going to give you more visibility during this very saturated time of year. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we offer more tips and advice through our Instagram at all you need method. And you can learn more about our course and our seven step method that all small business owners can use to turn their business into a lasting brand on all you need method.com. Good luck this holiday season. Thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for SBDA for having us. Hi, this is Tarion Barrington from Barrington Group. We're a video and photography production company and we're proud to support SBDA for all the great work they're doing to help small businesses, especially when it comes to protecting small businesses from being hacked. And in today's world, we know how important security is for small businesses. So kudos to SBDA and to all small businesses. I say take advantage of the free resources that they have to offer. Thank you and stay blessed. Thank you for joining. My name is Ravi and I am the SMB Modern Work and Security Lead at Microsoft. There are three areas I want to walk you through today. First, what does the current security landscape look like and how does this impact you as a small and medium business? Second, how are Microsoft investing in building security solutions built for SMBs in mind? And then finally, what free resources do we have at Microsoft that can help you on this journey of becoming more secure and doing more with less? Security is a key challenge for small and medium businesses. We see that 43% of cyber attacks target small businesses. In addition, 60% of small businesses face closure within six months of a cyber breach. Look, cyber attacks are becoming more frequent and sophisticated. In fact, there's been an over a 300% increase in ransomware attacks alone in the past year. We've also heard from small businesses that the pressures to manage and secure IT environments is challenging. We know that complexity is a vulnerability. With the emergence of remote and hybrid work, there's also been an influx of technology solutions a company uses. With so many more devices, user groups, and data to manage, it can be hard to keep up with the sophisticated threats that a company faces today. This new distributed landscape can come at the cost of security. Another consistent theme we've heard is that there is a demanding regulatory landscape out there. This means companies have to become secure to stay in business and to do business, even for organizations in traditionally less regulated industries. All these areas can cost you time, money, and pull you away from doing what matters most, which is running your business. The good news is Microsoft have invested in building simple and cost-effective solutions built for small and medium businesses. It's been built to bring you the power of enterprise-grade security that moves beyond traditional antivirus. With AI-based service, you get real-time detection of known or trending threats, 
The solution looks across your environment against multiple activities and devices and users and aggravates your alerts into a single incident making platform that makes it easier for you to manage and respond to threats. Look, at Microsoft, we take great responsibility to protect our customers and work together with fellow defenders to make a world safer place. It may surprise you to know that Microsoft is the largest security vendor in the world. We help secure more than 700,000 organizations and countless users rely on our services every day. And we do take our responsibility to serve you seriously. So let's take a look at how this works. If you think of your business as a building, let's look how this solution keeps you safe. Threat and vulnerability management is like a building inspector looking at your doors and windows for potential weaknesses. It's a risk prevention approach to vulnerability management that helps reduce threats before they become serious problems later. Attack service reduction works by making sure the windows are locked and only the right people have keys to the front door. Next generation protection acts as the lock to the front door. It helps to stop things you don't want to enter from file based and fileless malware to spyware. Endpoint detection and response is like a security camera system helping you see and record an intruder in the building. Defenders advanced tools then sets off alarms allowing you to respond directly to the problem device or file. And finally, auto investigation and remediation is your alarm system, calling the authorities and taking the intruder away. Microsoft Defender for Business automatically investigates alerts and helps you remediate complex threats, acting as your personal security analyst working 24 seven hours to protect your business. All these features are available in Microsoft 365 Business Premium or as a standalone SKU. Let's take a quick look at a video that explains the free evaluation and the technology experts that can help you start this journey. Are you planning to modernize your business? At no cost to you and working hand in hand with your technology partner, Microsoft can provide great resources to help you identify and deploy the right solutions for today's needs and tomorrow's growth. On one hand, you can get a rapid and secure evaluation of your current technology environment. This evaluation delivers actionable data-driven insights into security vulnerabilities, optimization opportunities, and other areas of improvement. Another complimentary resource available to you is our experienced team of Microsoft expert consultants who can provide analysis, guidance, and next steps in critical areas such as optimizing costs, enhancing cybersecurity, designing your cloud architecture, enhancing the skills of your team, and answering any other technical questions you might have. Through an evaluation and or with the help of our experts, we can create a customized business and adoption plan tailored to your needs. Microsoft is here to support you and your technology partner as you embark on a technology modernization journey. Get started by talking with your Microsoft Solutions Advisor today. Thank you for your time today and please take note of the email address on the slide to take benefit of these free resources discussed today. Once you email this alias, you'll have access to the evaluation we've discussed and also the technology experts available to you. Thank you once again for your time and please do reach out if you've got any further questions. Hi, I'm Caitlin with GS1 US. We're proud to be a local ally supporting the Small Business Digital Alliance. We are a not-for-profit supply chain standards organization that's best known as the place where you get your UPC barcodes, but also the numbers encoded into the barcodes called Global Trade Item Numbers or GTINs. Small businesses that want to grow recognize the power behind this barcode, and they understand that it can be a gateway to global commerce. You see, when you get a GS1 barcode, your product will not only scan in a store, but it also becomes a key part of your product's digital identity. GS1 US supports small businesses that are going digital by enabling products to be accepted by multiple retailers and online marketplaces. This means you can help manage your inventory better. You can also prove your product's authenticity. You can ensure your product is trackable in the supply chain. 
Many online marketplaces and search engines require valid global trade item numbers in order to list your products. There's evidence that having them included in your online product listing can increase sales conversions up to 20%, according to a Google study. We encourage small businesses to check out our flexible options for identifying products on our website, gs1us.org. We also have a variety of digital tools available on the SBDA Digital Tool Library, including a barcode estimator that helps entrepreneurs understand how many barcodes they'll need based on the number of products or product variations that they have. You can also subscribe to our podcast, Next Level Supply Chain, where we often have small business owners on to talk about their perspectives. For example, we recently welcomed Austin Brown, the owner of a CBD company called Tenacana, who put the e-commerce opportunity into perspective for us. He said, we can take a small farm and go global. That's the power of e-commerce. Thank you. We hope that you'll visit our website and check out all that we have to offer. And please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is John Lawson. I'm the CEO of Cold Rice Media and the founder of the Shoestring King. Look, e-commerce basically saved my life. I was about to go bankrupt and a friend told me, hey, why don't you sell some stuff on eBay? I started by selling used books on eBay. Let's fast forward that to four years later and the business was blowing up all on e-commerce. Growth Hacking e-commerce. This is Brent. He is a bicycle mechanic with a shop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Recently, a well-known mountain biker wore his gear in a documentary and Brent's online sales surged, creating a logistical nightmare. Brent needs a better way to manage order fulfillment, but he's not sure where to start. Growth hacking strategies can help future-proof your business. As Brent discovered, when your customer base grows, the rest of your business will need to grow with it. To understand how this works, let's look at the three levels of growth optimization, customer, revenue, and profit. But as Brent so recently discovered, acquiring new e-commerce customers won't help you in the long run if you can't efficiently deliver the products they want. Breaking down e-commerce logistics. Now that he's experienced firsthand what a business driver e-commerce can be, he's inspired to keep the momentum he knows he needs to devote much more time and energy into properly managing his e-commerce logistics. The term e-commerce logistics refers to the warehousing and distribution of online retail products from the moment a customer places an order to the moment the order is received. When you look at e-commerce logistics through the lens of growth optimization, it's easy to see the impact on all three levels. The customer level is affected because a customer might make the decision to purchase in the first place because of your logistics, namely your shipping and return policies. The revenue level is likely impacted by logistics since a customer's initial delivery experience can influence their decision to return or whether to recommend you to others. Lastly, there are numerous ways that logistics can affect your profits. As Brent discovered, without a scaling plan in place, he was unprepared to deal with the increased order volume. Since the advent of fast and free shipping and returns, customer expectation for delivery experience is at an all-time high. Unfortunately, so is the cost of shipping and warehousing. As a small business owner, it will be a constant challenge to try to meet your audience expectations. So you will need to be realistic about what you are able to provide and still manage your cost efficiency. One way to do this is by understanding the components of an e-commerce logistics supply chain. Even before the orders for a product or process, the journey of that item through the logistics supply chain has already begun. The beginning of an e-commerce supply chain is product sourcing. This refers to the supplier or manufacturer of the goods you will be selling online. Your product will then need to be processed through an efficient inventory management system. Monitored by your inventory management system, your product will then travel to where it is being warehoused. As your online business grows, you will likely need additional space to house your inventory. Once an order is fully processed, Order fulfillment will go to work, locating the desired products, then carefully packaging them 
in a manner that ensures safe delivery and includes any special branding treatments you require. Just as speedy delivery has become a customer expectation in e-commerce, so has an easy, quick return process. To many customers, a return experience carries just as much weight as the initial ordering and delivery experience. Even if some of the components of the logistics supply chain seem daunting, there are a few ways you can approach creating a process that fits your business. There are three main types of logistic chains, in-house, drop shipping, and 3PLs. Brent makes a wish list of the capabilities his business needs. Scalability and cost savings top the list, followed by reduced complexity. He realizes that what he wants most is a reliable partner with the right expertise to help him put together the most efficient solution. Brent considered his audience as well as his business needs when deciding on a logistics supply chain option. A 3PL fits his core need of scaling to meet customer demand, and it can also provide the expertise he wants in creating a streamlined logistics process. But the decision-making doesn't stop there. There are many nuances to selecting the right logistics partner. Though it will take some time and effort to evaluate different providers, the investment will be worth it when you are able to secure a trustworthy partner who can grow alongside you. While finding the right logistics provider can have the greatest impact on your e-commerce supply chain, there are other best practices you can implement to modernize and control your logistics environment. Whatever logistics chain type you adopt, find ways to incorporate automation. This might be done through your 3PL's technology, your e-commerce platform, or through a software system you purchase. It could be selecting a fulfillment center that uses robots that increase productivity or cut down on human error when picking products. Getting an order wrong creates instant disappointment and can lose a customer for good. Don't prioritize speed over accuracy and make sure to ask any logistics partner what their accuracy rate is. Determining your warehouse needs can be tricky since you're trying to achieve a balance between keeping enough inventory on hand to satisfy demand and ordering so much that it languishes on the shelf. Adoption of fast free shipping has reshaped the logistics landscape. Customers are increasingly reluctant to paying shipping fees and yet delivery costs continue to climb. A key piece to understand about the high cost of delivery is the last mile service or the final leg of the item's journey that transports it from the delivery hub to the customer's door. That final jaunt can be responsible for more than half of the item's total shipping costs. One option worth investigating is FBA, or Fulfillment by Amazon. This refers to the service Amazon provides to help businesses grow by providing them with access to their vast, efficient logistics network. In this model, you would pay for Amazon to be your logistics partner and their fulfillment centers would house, pack, and provide a swift, reliable, last mile delivery experience for your customer. Increased customer returns are an unfortunate side effect of the boom in e-commerce. So it's a good practice to accept that returns are a fact of e-commerce life and put an efficient plan in place to deal with them. Due to the nature of business, disruptive issues will arise from time to time that affect your e-commerce supply chain. Since logistics management is such a driving concern, e-commerce retailers are seeking out new creative ways to cut costs or manage customer demand. New considerations for logistics. One way that e-commerce businesses are trying to forecast demand is by going directly to the source and asking customers what they want to see more or less of. Use social media channels to reach out and survey your target audience to find out what they currently care about in your industry. Some online sellers are seeing return business from creating a more personalized branded delivery experience. This might consist of wrapping items in branded packaging, including free samples, or a custom thank you note. E-commerce sellers are also seeking to create brand identity and recognition by cultivating an omni-channel experience. This applies to retailers who have a physical location in addition to an e-commerce channel. While e-commerce is still driven 
by speed and low cost options, more and more consumers want to spend their money with companies who prioritize sustainable solutions in packaging and process. After carefully considering an assortment of 3PLs, Brent has decided to pursue two new logistics partners. Because scalability was his primary need, he is looking to try fulfillment by Amazon since their extensive network can help cut down on his last mile shipping costs. Don't cut corners when it comes to picking logistic providers. It can save you time and money in the long run. Now that you have a better understanding of e-commerce and logistics, head on over to the activity and test your new knowledge. Hey, I'm Dr. Kim McNair, CEO of KNP Kim McNair Productions, and I support the SBDA. I'm telling you, it's amazing. To be partnered with them is a way that you can grow your business through technology to be able to scale your business. So this is what you want to do. These are the people you want to be a part of. Hey, you're getting it from me. You better do it. Hi everyone, I'm Stasia from Grow with Google. Our program helps people grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering tools and resources. We've trained more than 9 million people across the United States on digital skills thanks to a network of more than 8,500 partners. Thanks to everyone out there for listening, and a big thank you to the Small Business Administration and Business Forward for bringing us together through the Small Business Digital Alliance. We look forward to helping more businesses, like you, use digital tools to unlock growth opportunities. Today, we'll provide some tips to help your business showcase your products on Google for free. Research shows that people are starting their holiday shopping earlier than ever. A global survey from June showed that 26% of shoppers had already started. If your business has a product to sell, you want to make the most of this opportunity. In the next 10 minutes, I will show you some ways to showcase your products on Google. Let's start with a Google business profile. This tool is not available for pure e-commerce businesses. It's intended for businesses with physical locations that are open to customers, as well as to businesses that provide services in a local area. But if you're a retailer with a physical store, you can create a free business profile to highlight your products. Let's back up. Where does a Google business profile appear? If you've ever searched Google for a specific business, you've probably seen it. On a desktop or laptop computer, this information usually displays in a box on the right-hand side of the search results page. The image on this slide shows a business profile on a mobile device. It includes photos of the store and products, the address and directions, a phone number, a star rating with links to customer reviews, and more. This information can also appear on Google Maps. A business profile offers a capsule look at key business information, but it can do more. For example, you can create posts to promote offers. It's no surprise that shoppers are often looking for deals, especially during the holidays. 70% of shoppers in a survey said that deals, 
discounts and special promotions make a difference when they choose where to shop. And that's where posts can come in handy. You can use a Google business profile to create posts that highlight special offers, new products, holiday product bundles, and more. Next, you can use the Google business profile to read and respond to customer reviews. 64% of US holiday shoppers who used Google said they did so for discovery and inspiration. And many customers take reviews into account. Reviews can also help you, the business owner, by offering insight into how customers feel about your business. And third, you can highlight products available in your store and on your website. This can help people who are looking for gift ideas and inspiration and building gift lists. So how do you do all this? Once you have created or claimed your business profile, you and anyone authorized as a manager can edit and update information directly on a Google search results page or via the Google Maps app. If you haven't created or claimed your business profile yet, start at google.com slash business. Once verified, search Google for your business name. You should see your business with buttons at the top that allow you to edit information. Today, we're focused on promoting products, so I will show you how to do that. Search for your business on Google, then click the Edit Profile button. Click Products, then Get Started. You'll be prompted to enter information like the product name, a category, a photo, a price or price range, a description, and an optional button if you want to link to a page on your website. I'll throw in one more tip for those of you out there with brick and mortar retail stores. There's a free tool called Pointy that offers retailers a way to add in-store products to Google with no manual data entry. Here's how it works. Pointy connects your point of sale system to Google. So if you use a system like Clover, Square, or Lightspeed, you can download the Pointy app and add your products to Google. Alternatively, you can order a free device called a pointy box. It plugs in between your barcode scanner and the point of sale system. Now, scan your products as you sell them, and when you do that, the products are added to the Google Business Profile in a section labeled, See What's In Store. Now, nearby searchers can see what you have to offer and check stock availability. These products can surface on Google Search, Maps, and Shopping. You can use Pointy if you have a physical store that customers can visit and your products carry UPC EAN barcodes that you scan at the register. Pointy is currently available for businesses in the United States, Canada, the UK, and Ireland. To learn more or to get started, visit pointy.withgoogle.com. Let's move on and talk about another free tool called Google Merchant Center. Merchant Center lets you manage how your in-store and online product inventory appears on Google. You can manage the product descriptions, images and prices, plus note which products are in stock, limited stock, or out of stock. Product info for Merchant Center is eligible to appear in Google search results in varying placements and formats. The example on this slide shows product details like dimensions and pricing, a delivery time frame, and confirmation that the product is in stock. Sometimes you'll see a row of products above or on the side of the search results. These are shopping ads that also use information from Merchant Center. However, these are separate paid placements. At the top of Google, you'll find a tab labeled Shopping, and products from Merchant Center are eligible to appear here, too. The Shopping tab showcases products available to purchase. These results are called Free Listings. Clicking a product shows more information. And third, Merchant Center products are eligible to appear in the Images results. 
Shoppers may use image results early in their shopping journey to find inspiration. The images in these results are not necessarily products for sale, but if an image does represent an item available to purchase, it will include a label shaped like a price tag called a product annotation. Clicking that offers a path to purchase. Here's a high level overview of how Merchant Center works. You'll create a free account. Next, you'll add products, and then they're eligible to surface across Google. Okay, that's a really brief overview. To learn more, access an onboarding guide at g.co slash grow slash setup merchant center. By the way, this step may already be covered if you use an e-commerce platform that integrates with Merchant Center. While well, I'm not recommending any e-commerce solutions over another, some providers like Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, and GoDaddy offer Google Merchant Center integrations. If you're using a different e-commerce platform, check its support site to see if they partner with Merchant Center. I'm just about out of time, but I'll mention one consideration. When you set up Merchant Center, you must choose where customers go through the checkout process. If you have an e-commerce website, you can direct customers there to complete the purchase. If you have a brick and mortar store, you can encourage customers to come in and buy. There's a third option available for some US businesses, a no cost checkout service that allows people to buy products on Google even if you don't have a website. Aptly named Buy on Google, this service allows you to showcase in-store inventory in Google shopping results and use Google to facilitate an online sale. You will still need other services like payment processing, inventory, and order management. I'll wrap this up with some final tips. First, if your business is eligible, create or claim a Google business profile. Use posts to share promotions add products, and respond to customer reviews. If you're a brick and mortar business with a point of sale system, consider trying Pointy to add your products to Google. Whether you sell in-store, online, or both, use Merchant Center to show your products across Google. If you use an e-commerce platform, check to see if it integrates with Merchant Center. The setup might already be done. If you're selling on an e-commerce site, make sure that customers can complete a purchase without a hassle. The quicker and easier it is to complete the sale, the more likely it is to happen. And last but not least, don't optimize for mobile. Think mobile first. I hope these tips help your business thrive this holiday shopping season and well beyond. If you want to access tools and training from Grow with Google, visit google.com slash grow. Thank you so much for listening today. I wish you the very best growing your business. Moving Forward Small Business is excited to officially partner with the Small Business Digital Alliance as a local ally, adding to its vast inventory of training tools, actionable resources, and networking opportunities for small businesses wishing to succeed, grow, and impact the world. Moving Forward Small Business provides ongoing training for small business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, and professionals in relationship to digital presence, growth, attracting new customers, leadership, operations, finance, and a lot more. I'm Jimmy Newsom, the founder and CEO of Moving Forward Small Business, and our vision is to reduce the failure rate of small businesses by 1 million by the year 2050, and we hope to exceed that number. We're committed to the success of the small business and the entrepreneurial communities. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to working with the Small Business Digital Alliance, the other local allies, the national partners, and to continue to support the small businesses across this country. Have an amazing day. Hi, I'm Alexis Sierra Vaughn, Head of Agency Marketing for Cowbell Cyber. Hello, I'm Jawan Grant, Risk Engineer at Cowbell Cyber. So today, I really want to kind of talk a little bit about some top holiday season cybersecurity tips. Small businesses have limited staff, small information technology departments, 
and often little money set aside for remediation. They're often prey to cyber threats. According to McAfee, 81% of surveyed organizations experience increased cyber threats during the holiday season. Remote connections are often targeted and it's widely known that employees will be working from home or from travel destinations or even in the hybrid environment or from anywhere else around the world. This will be, con this will be particularly common this year coming off of the COVID-19 pandemic and remote workforce revolution. Some of the top five things that you can do to protect yourself and your business from cyber attacks during the holiday season. Jawan, take it away. So the first thing that you can do to protect yourself during the holiday seasons is to utilize a hardened VPN solution. Now, this is important because we want remote access into your network to be protected. Now, there's a couple of ways we can go about this. Uh, one being Mac filtering, which is uh, company issued devices. Um, their Mac address being their physical device address are recorded within the network and then allows access into um, the company network. My second tip is to secure your Wi-Fi. We want employees to utilize Wi-Fi without being compromised in the event. Now, in order to protect your Wi-Fi, you would like to have a password on top of it. Um, second is to train your employees on utilizing public Wi-Fi because we don't want their data to be compromised by bad threat actors. And then third is just to hide office Wi-Fi so that people can't access it when they're not within the organization itself. So my third tip is to back up regularly, especially before the holidays. And this is very important because um, you don't want all of your information to be sitting in one place and then something happens to it to where you're not able to rebuild from backups. Redundancy is the name of the game as far as your backup solution and also the cadence. Tip number four on how to protect your data during the holidays. So we're gonna talk about enforcing least privilege access policy. Now this is important because not all users need access to the same information. If they did have access to the same information, this would allow for um, a compromise of the data being accessed. Now ways to ensure that uh, the principle of least privilege is enforced is to first make sure that you're doing background checks of all your employees prior to giving them access to your information system. Also having an acceptable use policy that they fill out and are trained on is also a good tip to enforce as far as the privilege of lease access. Also, it's good that you have your network administrators monitor the network activity of users and the information that they're trying to access, just to make sure there's no conflict of user A trying to access users B data without them knowing or sharing their permission. Step number five is to conduct cyber training. It's very important for your users go on vacation to train them on different attack vectors that may happen. One being phishing, which is very common during the holidays. This is important because you have threat actors send emails uh, pretending to be upper management. Uh, they may send emails on holiday deals and things of that nature. Now, the scary part about this is within these emails, there are typically links within them uh, embedded there are typically links embedded within the email. Now, if a user clicks on that link, it allows the hacker to have remote access to the organization's network. So also during the holidays, you have a lot of rotation happening, whether it's seasonal temps taking over for full-time employees. Now, we want our temps not only to be trained up on their job description and their roles and responsibilities, but also to have a proper understanding of the best practices as far as do's and don'ts within the network. At Calvell, we offer all of our policyholders a complimentary service with Wiser, where they receive 20 seats for their small business, and they're able to get the training that they need to be successful because your training of your employees is always going to be your first line of defense in order to keep your business safe from any type of cyber incidents over the holidays. So in closing, our top five holiday tips for keeping your small to medium sized business safe during the holidays is number one, 
use a hardened VPN solution. Secure your Wi-Fi, back up regularly, and enforce lease privileges access policy, and also conduct trainings because none of this matters if you don't conduct regular trainings with your employees. Again, we would love to thank the SBDA for your partnership and all Cowbell resources can be found in the SBDA digital tool library. And to learn more about Cowbell, visit cowbell.insure to get a policy and to get more information about our company. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kathy Adams, President and CEO of the Oakland African American Chamber of Commerce. In 2020, we raised over $1 million to help black businesses keep their stores open and services available during COVID-19. Today, we continue to advocate, support, and highlight black and women-owned businesses. We find access to capital, show business owners how to win government contracts and offer educational workshops to grow and thrive. We know that the best tools of all these strategies are digital ones. And we know how great the need is for business owners to be as tech savvy as possible in today's post COVID environment. That is why we continuously direct our members to the Small Business Digital Alliance. Inside the Digital Tool Library, you'll find helpful webinars from companies literally from A to Z, Amazon to Zen Business, and all of these resources are free. See for yourself. Go to smallbusinessdigitalalliance.com. Welcome to Get Set Up. Are you ready to go digital and take your small business to the next level? Here at Get Set Up, we've created a vibrant community that participates together in live classes instructed by older adults on the tools and skills needed to navigate the modern business world. But it's more than classes, it's also about making connections. Unlike other learning platforms, on Get Set Up, you ask questions, talk with instructors, and share experiences with the other participants. Today, I'm going to do a brief training to highlight the importance of digital marketing. Digital marketing is an essential aspect of digital operations. Otherwise, people can't find you and your products and services. Here are a few steps you can take to make sure you are upping your digital marketing game when you take your business to the next level. Design a website, set up a digital store, create a digital footprint, social media, and schedule in your digital marketing. Designing a website is essential for credibility these days. This can be as easy as doing it yourself with resources and tools like WordPress and Wix that allow you to use simple templates to build your own site. You can take classes as well to help you get your questions answered and hone your skills. Or you can hire someone else to create more elaborate features for you. Part of setting up your website is setting up your online store. You can do this directly with your own website with a third-party app like Shopify. This helps you to maintain more control and manage more of the financials. You may choose instead or in addition to participate in digital marketplaces on sites like Etsy or eBay, where you utilize already established marketplaces to sell your products and services. These days, everyone is online and people search for their needs through Google and other browsers. It's important to create a digital presence that leaves a digital footprint for your business. You do this through social media sites, your own website, reviews, and making sure you are featured as often as possible as a resource in your area. Social media sites are becoming increasingly important as a marketing tool for small businesses. Setting up business accounts is free for social media. Then you can choose to use advanced settings and spend money on marketing if you'd like. Depending on your target, it's important to pick and choose the appropriate social media to create your business accounts for. LinkedIn is a professional networking site. The site helps give credibility to your business and allows people to easily look you up and your staff to see why you're experts in your field. Facebook appeals to audiences 35 and older as a resource for searching for local information and continues to be a prominent place where groups trade information. Creating a business page here helps you to have one more touch point to be found. Instagram is optimized for sharing images. If you have great products, this is a perfect way to show off cool knickknacks, woodwork, clothing, food, or other awesome products. It's important you have good photographs here to capture people's attention and that you post regularly. Using hashtags also helps you to be found by new potential customers. TikTok is great for short videos on tips and tools. 
You can highlight products and services here in short clips of a few seconds. While this is up and coming, still as a tool, it can be a fun way to integrate easily as well with Facebook and Instagram. You may also want to start accounts on eBay, Etsy, Nextdoor, and other more local or specific sites that meet your business needs. Finally, it's important to keep up to date with your digital presence and marketing as part of your digital operations. Remember, this is an essential part of your digital operation to assure that you have new clients and your past clients keep you top of mind for your products and services. This means a regular schedule for digital posts, doing digital cleans to assure that your website and other material are up to date, and featuring all the great work that you are doing. Get Set Up offers classes on these topics and more with other entrepreneurs eager to help you take your business to the next level. We are the fastest growing online community for older adults learning, exploring, and having fun together. To join our community, start by taking a class and taking your business to the next level. Hi, Mike. Uh, hey, Janice. Just here to protect you from cyber criminals. Hi, Tessa. Hey, Jay. Do not give that shady website your password. Did he get fished? Cyber, cyber criminals. We got this. Always do. Get the kid. I got the kid. Yeah. Shoes off, please. <laughs> Move it. Go to the real site and create a stronger password. No, no, no! Hit him with the multi factor authentication. Oh, Come on. This is the stench. We'll take it from here. Furtada. Ooh, throw some walk on mine. Okay, hun. Protect yourself before you connect yourself. Visit protectconnect.com to learn more. Ooh, do we think your bank would ask for your password in an email? Uh, who are you? I'm Jeannie, your internet bodyguard. What? Nothing. I just expected you to look more cooler, like, you know, bodyguardy. Like this? Uh, no. I don't know what an internet bodyguard is supposed to look like. I'm just kind of a... And where was I? I am your internet bodyguard, and it is my job to protect you by teaching you how to recognize the different kinds of scams and hacks out there. Honestly, I'm a pretty internet savvy person, so this is probably unnecessary. Oh, look, a gift card from your favorite store. Yeah, see, now this makes sense because I recently gave him a shout out and I got a pretty decent following. What are you doing? I am internet bodyguarding you. Are you okay, it sounds like it should be a lot more cooler. That uh, email is a phishing scam. Look at the link, it's spelled wrong. No. Yeah, yeah. It's okay though. Mark that sender as spam and delete the email. Does a link look suspicious? Don't click it. Got an invoice for a service that you didn't sign up for? Don't pay it. Got an email uh, giving you urgent demands, overly emotional? Don't fall for it. Hmm, like this one that says, call your mother or else in all caps. That's, that's obviously phishing, right? No, that's a real email from your mom. I can still block her, right? Why'd you block your mom? I was just joking. Cause... Yeah, you better call your mom. What is this? These are all the people on the internet currently trying to steal your identity. What? Look, this one even sounds like you. Hey, gang. Should we hit the new brewery for a thirst fix? Bee boop. I don't, I don't sound like that. Yeah, well, that's a hacker's algorithm. No! What up, Paul? Hey, Jeannie. That was my favorite internet bodyguard. Doug, this is Paul. Uh, I mean your multi-factor authentication wizard. A visual metaphor for a password protection app that you're going to start using for everything. To pass through to your bank account, you must pass my tests. One, what was the middle name of your college roommate? Uh, I actually don't even know his real first name. We actually used to call him the toe because he had this okay, sock. Cool, cool. So I, I don't need to hear that story. Uh, what is the name 
of your first hit. Neil Catcher Harris. That's pretty good, I do like that. Yeah, he was adorable. That's good. <laughs> you know what? The safest way to do this is with a one-time password. Okay. What is the six-digit code you see in your authentication app? It's six... No, 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 Jeez, just stay there. Correct, Doug. You shall now have access to your bank account. All right, later. Hey, Paul. All right, let's move on to this next lesson, huh? Ooh, I was wondering if we could take a break. No? No. No, you're right. Uh-oh, what's this? An invoice for a service I didn't request? You better save me. I know you know better than to fall for that. Yeah, there she is. I'm just here to say goodbye. Wait, what? No, goodbye. Yeah, buddy. It's time. Well, then who's going to stop me from caring about memes more than my online safety? You are. Ooh, have you met me? You have the power to protect yourself and the ones you love when it comes to cybersecurity. You always have. Gee, I can barely remember to drink water throughout the day. You expect me to be in charge of my own internet security? You've been doing it this whole time, Doug. Wait, what's happening? Stop, come back. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Not really, though. And my job here is done now. Wait, what are you saying? You got this. Now get out there and spread the word. Help other people protect themselves on the internet. Oh, I should call my mom. Yeah, and your dad. And your friends and probably your Aunt Linda, who really needs to stop entering her social security number into all of her dating profiles. P profiles, plural? <laughs> Ugh, no. Thank you again for joining us today. I hope today's webinar helped prepare you for a successful and secure holiday season for your business. Please share this webinar with your employees, colleagues, and local community organizations interested in the benefits of digital tools for small business. And finally, please visit our digital tool library at www.smallbusinessdigitalalliance.com for more free tools and trainings.